Oh, oh, I love shiny new things. All spick and span and sparkly and brand new. Like a new car? Like a new car, some new silverware. I would say like a new oven. A new oven, new, yeah, any new appliance really. New nice, computer. Nice and shiny, clean, nothing... Hasn't hasn't been through it yet. hasn't hasn't seen the trouble. No tarnish. No rust. It does has no experience yet. That's that's really kind of messed with it at all. It's probably going to answer a lot of easier to answer questions, possibly. You know, like refrigerators typically do when they knew. Oh yeah, yeah. Especially the ones with the smart screen now. Oh yeah, yeah for sure. You can tweet from that fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord, the day that we live in. I don't even tweet from my phone. I mean, that's, that's true. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's it's a it's a Schmodown reaction, and we're the Cine Fanatics. My name's Chris Adams. I'm Robert Adams. Uh, today is two brand newbies. Some some shiny. Uh, what do they call them in Clone Wars? Some shinies. They call them shinies. Sure. You, you maybe you're not there, and you're and you're watching yet. Oh no, yeah, because it was what the new clone troopers that still need to. They haven't had like dirt and yeah, stuff on the Yeah, the side. barbarian yeah, versus Clee Wiggins. Yeah. Uh, so two <laughs> new people here. Uh, we have the barbarian who's going to be uh, representing the fin the Finstock in implosion. I mean exchange. And uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then there's Clee Wiggins who's representing. She's corruptible. She's she's representing corruption. One one one's combustible and one's corruptible. Yeah. Even though, even though Barbarian really has absolutely nothing to do with anything that's happening in the Finstock Exchange, she's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm ready to go. Just stroking a pelt. Yeah, stroking the little, little fuzzy. Yeah, the little fuzzy. Uh, so, who do you got? Yeah, we don't know anything about them. Not so. a lick of anything. So, uh, where's a coin? Do we have a coin? We'll do like a yeah. heads um, or tails. I'll we tell don't you. Have a coin. I'll tell you this much. I know a little bit about the Barbarian. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he is another competitor who's being uh, talked up pretty highly by Ethan Irwin. Nice. To where I think I might be misquoting, so don't hold me to this, but Ethan Irwin said something to the effect of, yeah, he's scary. Ah. So, based on just that, I, I've heard that Clee Wiggins is good from other sources. I can't remember what those sources are, but I've heard that she's good. But uh, for somebody like Ethan Irwin to say, yeah, he's scary, or to that effect, great video today so far. Stick with us. It'll get better. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with the Barbarian. All right, so I'll take Clee Wiggins just so we get this uh, back and forth, like, brother Civil War thing for just this episode, probably. It makes for a fun video. Yeah, probably. Go Clee! Go Bar Barbary! I was trying to rhyme. Barbarian! Craig! Clean him, Clee! Works. Clean them clean? Yeah, like clean clean his clock. Oh, clean 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 Craig's clock. Wow. I'm not so, about to tongue twist here. Yeah, because you can't say regular words normal. Yeah, probably. Uh yeah, so Barbarian. We're gonna go with Barbarian instead of Craig because I think that's what he's going by in the in the Schmodown, so. Sure. Ready? Sure. Here we go. Let's let's go ahead and do the thing. Not doing a cutscene at the beginning for this one. Nope. He does have a glorious head of hair, though. <laughs> Guess he did that Gilda thing. <laughs> Gilda, are you Hello, decent? Hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. Alongside Ken Napsack, I am Mark Baby Carrot Zealous. And Ken, you know whether it's a movie trivia showdown competitor or it's a high schooler in the backseat of a car, we advise you to be prepared. However, with this matchup, we don't know how to be prepared because we've never seen these competitors before. You know, I mean, Mark, it's always it a works. dream being here. You and I, we've always wanted to be minor league baseball announcers, but That's we our got destiny. this instead. You're looking live at Riverfront Stadium. Tom Seaver throwing for the Reds today. Uh, happy to be here with you, but uh, this is, I don't know what to say about this match. we got two competitors hey. coming in here. New season, <laughs> we didn't new either. That's what season seven is all it's about here. The new era. Seems to be the uh, the baseline here. Years. Gosh, I was just 71 when this hmm. started, but we're There's so a show. excited to have new, Would new you like to watch it? Uh, in, uh, <laughs> I mean, the answer is unknown, yes. Uh, Always. I'm like a vampire because I'm this whole season could be new people the, and I'll watch it. Thought of new blood. Now, now one competitor, you and I both know well, it's our 
good friend uh, Clee. Oh. On follow her on her social media at Clee the Pimp. Yep. It is Clee the Pimp Wiggins is going to be taking on a barbarian. Yeah. Yeah. Not okay. Not, sorry, the barbarian. I've, yeah, we're now learning about Clee. Didn't know that before, but now we do. Here, part of the and Finch I'll tell exchange. you, like and my is, mother told uh, me, oh, Lord. always so side with the pimp. Oh, that's not where I thought that was going. Well, no, I was going to say, I'll tell you, like, who told me, cash rules everything around me. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. There it is. Cream. Gotta make that uh, money. That's more Finstock exchange, though. To the match. He brings that panache. But then yeah, okay. Greed is good. You look at Clea the Pimp Wigan. She is represented by the Queen of Corruption, Shannon Barney. She's in that faction. So this is as much corruption and then the Finstock exchange well, feeling out their new team. Little, member. little shot of in Barney. Life, Barney? Bonnie. Of corruption, Bonnie, who is with days. Barney. I understand the change happens. Uh, I once had hair down on my neck. Sounds I like I should be like a daytime talk show. Bonnie and Barney. But, uh, <laughs> Bonnie with Barney. Here with is Barney. the thing. Uh, Shannon <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, there's no purple dinosaur in this. And she could not be contained oh, I'm sure so Shannon loves the fact that you brought that up. She's knowledgeable well, no, she, I know she gets that a lot. She's, I've seen her pictures that she's put on the Facebook group. She plays with that. I got to tell you, I'll put the past behind me as a broadcast journalist here. And saying, I'm excited to see what she can do with Corruption. What a professional. Every time we say our last name, people snap become. around Let's us. Let's see how the newbies are on the mic with their pre show interview. Let's see what they had to say. I'm Craig, I'm the Barbarian. Hey, what? I want you to draft me. I'm going to be in the draft next year. Are you really? You got yeah, to draft me. Really? The exchange needs an action hero. I'm going to go with the Barbarian. <laughs> Well, 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 here we are. Season seven, chock full of rookies and chock full of veterans. We here at the Finstock Exchange have a couple of newcomers, one being the man right next to me. This barbarian guy, um, I've heard some pretty good things about him. He could be another strong, strong player. Now we're playing uh, Wiggins. Her first name escapes me. Klee. Klee. Like, like K-L-E-E -E or? I was told there'd be no spelling. Okay, oh yeah, cool. Listen, the queen <laughs> is in, again. If there's one thing that you already know about corruption, is that we bounce back. We don't quit, we don't stop, we take our losses in stride, and we move on. We got a lock on <laughs> just IG, cast our player to another teams. team and Ladies bring and out a new one and I start hyping that one up. To lock us down in singles. Effectively. I, just, I mean, I don't like to brag, but please do. I'm amazing. <laughs> she's in trouble, <laughs> and she's managed by corruption. They had a terrible draft. They were also told there'd be no spelling. Yeah, that's true too. I think you think what you think I know, but you don't actually know. And we have a little message um, for the Barbarian. I've got a savage on my team, okay? Bottom line is she's gonna make you look civilized after this. What happens is- <laughs> Bottom line, people think you're a loser. Really good. Oh, that's yeah. a, that's a Dagnino line. And prove they're not. Hence the truth serum. The Finstock Exchange, AKA the truth serum delivers. Good luck. Bye. <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready? You've probably already watched this match. I'm ready. Ken, I'm getting the vibe of confidence from the, both the Barbarian and Clee the Pimp. I think no, that ready. they maybe haven't been in this situation before, but they know the game. They've studied. They've watched old matches, and they're ready to let their moment shine. Do you have any sense as to what they're good at? Yeah, I did speak to them before, and yeah, they're both of them. I'll say this: both of them are pretty confident. They're 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 new to this, but they've studied this. Kind of like me, my first trip to the Sizzler All You Can Eat Salad Bar. I watched for about a month before I went in first. That's smart. And you, you kind of know your way around. But I asked Barbarian, I said, "What are your strengths?" He said, "My right bicep, my left bicep, flip. also Oscar movies." So we're gonna probably have a push-up contest nice. later. Clee the Pimp Wiggins, she just with. Quiet confidence that sci-fi, rom-coms, 80s, 90s, two of my favorite decades, so she brings those strengths to the showdown. You mean if you're not a competitor screaming into the mic, are you even in the showdown? We're about to find out. Ken, you ready to get going here? I am ready, sir. Then let's get ready to showdown! And now I turn it over to the golden throat, the man who will tell you get a free egg at Sammy's around the corner from the ballpark, Ken Knapsack, for the introduction. Intro juicing first. Representing corruption. We 
with a record of zero wins and zero defeats, making her debut in the movie Trivia Showdown Singles Division. Accompanied to the arena by her manager, the Queen of Corruption, Shannon Marty, this is Clee the Pig Wiggins! Is she coming out with a cane? Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. Of course she is. I still there. really like the but fact that Shannon took over her corruption. It, it that was, was a great storyline. It really worked so well. Uh -huh. I like that glass of champagne, too. She's uh, got a Star Wars shirt on. She is ready to go here. And I could probably uh, start sipping on some of that sauce myself. Absolutely. I've been doing that since 10 a.m. yesterday. And her <laughs> opponent. Also making his debut in the movie Trivia Schmodown Singles Division. Representing the Finstock Exchange and being accompanied to the arena by his manager, Bobby Gucci. Here is the Barbarian! And uh, no surprise here. Maybe Dagnino dressed more like the Barbarian as he has no shirt under that yeah. windbreaker <laughs> jogger. There's the there, Barbarian. Look at that. I'm starting to love it every time it's the fence stock exchange. Cody's just shouting from the from the booth. The Barbarian, it appears to have killed a small woodland creature yeah. on his way into the studio. From this angle, it looked like Sweetums from the Muppet movie chasing them down the street. Going <laughs> oh, right. His name is Elvis, and I didn't kill him. Oh, whoa, okay. did not. Uh, so Elvis is still alive after all these years. Wait, guys, don't leave without right, me. <laughs> Apparently I can't do Sweetnam's <laughs> voice. Yeah, I sound like Bobcat Goldthwait. I know. Hey, guys, guys. <laughs> don't leave without me. Oh. Something like that. That's right. Instead of cutting the video at the, at the rules, we now do Bobcat Goldthwait impressions. I told you this video was going to get better. <laughs> Coming, your most lugubriousness. Was it from Hercules? It was Pain and Panic? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love every time we talk about Bobcat Goldwith, I have to bring up his character from Hercules. Not his character Zed from Police Academy. Don't ever bring up Police Academy. Each competitor has three usages. Steve Gutenberg's masterpiece. I could bring up Grind. He was in that. Oh, okay. He was like a little motel owner. Mm. Nobody else besides me and Rachel Silverstein have seen Grind. By your manager. I've seen pieces of it you yeah. like while you were watching it. That's probably the extent cool. that you'll ever be interested right, in that the movie. Barbarian, um, are it's you very bad, fans? but I love it. I, I'm going to just say, Elvis, uh, prepared for the match. Elvis and I are always ready to rock. Okay. Very well spoken for a barbarian. <laughs> oh. Right. And, uh, yeah, I was barbarian. I was expecting like some Arnold Schwarzenegger here. impressions. Yes. All right, then, I'm, yeah, I'm getting more of like a Van Halen it's time like rock down. vibe from him. Rock mm -hmm. god vibe from him. Time the movie Which I know Ellis appreciates. Off, uh, oh, yeah. Question number one. That is going to be in the world of action adventure Panama. movies. <laughs> That's the extent that we have access to that song. What film in the Mission Impossible franchise was directed by Pixar filmmaker Brad Bird? We need the actual subtitle uh, of the movie. Not, not the Got number it. of the film. There's yeah. been a lot of these. It's been Mission colon impossible pictures. Right. Five, four, three, Two. Uh, JTE. Okay, I can it? repeat. We'll repeat the question. We'll count, the question. That. we'll count that. What film in the Mission Impossible franchise was directed by Pixar filmmaker Brad Bird? Uh, could be, you know, you don't be shot with those JTE rules. Is yeah. what I was so he's going to have their stroke at the entire. Uh, oh, that's, and I find that's it Elvis. I didn't Five. know who Elvis was. Four. Three. So there's Mission Impossible two. and then Mission and Impossible 2, which is down. Mission Impossible. Or, with Barbarian. Yeah. Ghost, ghost protocol. That is correct. Oh, oh well, I said ghost protocol. All right, right there it is. Yeah. Right. And there's also Please ghost protocol. Board. Yeah, whoops, I said Rogue Nation. Mission Impossible to remind us about the question. Thank you for that, Clee. As we move on to the world of new releases. I thought I had it right. That's right. Second question comes from the category. Dang it. New releases, new releases. Will Smith plays an assassin and his clone in what 2019 thriller? Is there anyone you'd rather? Hang I was like, out why with? is my? Can you name five people you'd rather spend an afternoon with? It, it, uh, why is my DJ brain Jeff blinking Jeff on the name of that movie? Uncle Phil Still haven't seen Go this. I haven't it. heard too many good things. Probably about not. It. Probably not gonna watch Four, it anytime soon. Three, two, and one. Pens are down. Look for answers. Start with Clee. Uh, Gemini Man. 
That is Nailed correct. It. And the Barbarian. And we got Ang Lee's Gemini, Gemini Man. All right. Two Gemini Man. Gemini Man. Clean. Looking good. Barbarian you can read that. Good. All right. Two to two so far. We move on to the category of dramas. And your question. Who you stars the good as Dick Cheney in the 2018 film Vice? Uh, Dick Cheney, of course. Shot a man in the face. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Gosh. And I love that's that like the first thing anyone ever goes to five, with that. Four, three. I long for the yeah, that or that he was the real president during Bush's run. Enter that <sighs> barbarian. Look for answers. The American Psycho Christian Bale. Well, this is yeah. true, Clay. UK's Batman Christian Bale. There yeah. it is. Uh, on it. Look at this. My favorite person to yell on the set of Terminator like Salvation, Christian Bale. Oh, good, good for me. I got it right. Oh, <laughs> good for <laughs> you. <laughs> I love that show. All right. Category number four. Question four is animated. Animated films. These are films. It's animated. It's Mark's jacket. What <laughs> is the name? What is the name of Gaston's short statured sidekick in Beauty and the Beast? So long story boring, how did I get this jacket? Mm. Uh, one Joshua Hercules Makuga, who you can catch on the History I'm Channel. On his name right. too. Hashtag eating history. Five, four, JTE. three, two, Shout out to Smokey. and one. Pens are down, looking for answers. Start that's, with Clee. That, I'm, mm. I know I'm wrong, but I guess. Nope, that no, is that's frozen. Oh, it's close. Barbarian. It's, you said that because he played Olaf. Yeah, yeah he did actually play, yeah. That is true. Yeah, Le Fou. That is correct. Is something European. Yeah, because uh, Josh Gad played, played, played him in the live action. Okay, yeah. and then yeah. voice go Olaf. Ahead, go ahead and just right. run right over me. <laughs> I'm not saying it. You're saying it, apparently. We'll all say it. Shut up. Halfway point as we move on to your next category, which is fantasy slash science fiction. And the question, who plays teenager Kim Boggs? In the film Edward Scissorhands, Wade Boggs, no 3,000 hit, was a home Box. run uh, for the Tampa Bay Devils. Uh, he, he ate 26 pieces of chicken. My game is completely game. thrown off right now. Of course, the Yankee Stadium. Five, an actual live horse. Four, three, what a barbarian two, ride on a horse. and God. one. Pens it down. Look for answers starting with the barbarian. The greatest person to ever watch a SAG award speech, Winona Ryder. All right. That is correct. Clay Wiggins. Wino forever. Winona Ryder. <laughs> right. Winona Ryder. Winona Ryder. Good oh, Lord. I'm so off okay, my game so tonight. My head is like four. not pulling answers at all. We know a lot about all. these competitors going in now. I think I can go ahead and proclaim they know a lot about a variety of they categories. Two plus can we like start, four, stop this and start it over? Comes in the category we don't do that. Comedies. <laughs> <laughs> I think they laugh harder when I do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what they laugh harder. That's what they all say, Mark. Uh, <laughs> funny. All right. You learn something new. Question every number six oh, in Lord. the category of comedy. I should have five right Which now. Which actress swaps bodies with Lindsay Lohan in 2003's Freaky Friday? It's um, an oddly worded question, isn't it? it? You ever watch that Lindsay Lohan Beach Club and Mykonos show? I watched every episode twice. <laughs> you know who sh should switch bodies <laughs> with Lindsay Lohan? From, um, <laughs> Kelly to Four. Justin. Watch how you answer this question. See, not as good. One, it should be. Pens are down. We are looking for answers starting with Clee. Wow. Oh, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. She once yelled at me in an elevator at Comic Con. That's true. Barbarian, yes. Jamie Lee Curtis. Very true. Jamie She's Lee Curtis. Not. Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow. All right, well, don't everybody... But she was joking. Turns out we had a great exchange. Everyone watching at home, I'm going to quickly ask the next question, then get 15 seconds more of this story. Your penultimate question in round number one comes from the world of horror slash thriller movies. And your query is, who stars as Nick Dunn in the David Fincher thriller Gone Girl? All right, so you and Jamie Lee Curtis. She gets it. What's she the was, hotel? She was carrying uh, the index. She was carrying her, her high heels. I said, oh, beauty is pain. She says, that's what a stupid man would say. Ah. It was a great change. Then we laughed at it. Good time. Okay. Five. Are you sure you both four, laughed at it? Three. Okay. Two. One. Pens are down. Looking for answers starting with the barbarian. America's Batman. Ben Affleck. <laughs> <laughs> good. Clee Wiggins. Well played. Austin's greatest bad boy, Ben Affleck. That's all right. right. I got a 7 6 game. Ben Afflected by like answering this question. That'd be Ben Affleck. Affleck. Showing their applause for both competitors yeah. here. Good match. Nicely good done. Match. Barbarian, potentially perfect. Can we have one. a perfect game? Eight. And final question, potentially. Category is 90s movies. 90s movies. 
Who plays crop duster pilot Russell Case in Independence Day? Um, uh, do you think the term crop dusting in 2020 is known more for farming or for uh, tooting? According to my dad, it's all about the toots. Okay. Your dad, who is a fan of Jack in the Box. Oh, what's his last Five, name? Four. One usually three, begets the other. Two, one. Pens down. Dang. Starting with nice. Flea. Oh. My favorite conspiracy theorist, Randy, Randy Quaid. Quaid. <laughs> right. That's American right. American treasure. Did barbarian. Elvis or the Barbarian have it? For a perfect it was round. also Elvis's favorite conspiracy theorist, Randy Quaid. We got a perfect round. Wow. I got Randy. No conspiracy here, Mark. Randy got Quaid. Got for the Barbarian. So, uh, Quaid Wiggins went with a great rookie show. Dennis Quaid is here. Round number one. Yeah. The barbarian, a Dennis Quaid wants round, a coffee so for his brother, Randy Quaid. Quaid. So, I got seven and a half points on that. No. You're ready within 15 seconds. I got half the name. Nope. For a two-point lead Seven over points. Cleet Wiggins going into round number two. I got six. Which actor co-stars with Kate Beckinsale as the lead of John 2001's Cusack. Serendipity? This is great. Beckinsale actually getting... John younger. Cusack. That is oh, correct. Elvis it. had it. I got that the is bonus. The barbarian's ear. Yep. And we he go got the answer from that pelt. From Elvis? Elvis gave him the Ooh, answer. Elvis the pelt. That is cheating. Two, Absolutely, wheel round. We got. I think a, I think barbarians uh, disqualified for that. Guys. I would challenge that. I would challenge it. it. Really Elvis uh, whispering in his ear. These are always That's fun. a challenge. So round number two is known as the wheel round, and on I'm being the wheel, completely so serious. graciously uh, provided this is my by serious Alex face. Uh, Tom Hanks is a sponsored wheel slice Ooh. by one of our many great patrons. You think they could uh, get That's answers from the kangaroo pelt? If someone is that what that is? Yes, it's kangaroo. Slice, oh. We will say the name of that mystery Probably sponsor. not. I have kangaroo so, sitting on the chair. At the landscape of this match, the I inherited it from her old roommate. With a two -point lead. Uh, sir, would you like to spin first or defer to Clee the Pimp Wiggins? I will spin first. Here All comes right. the barbarian with the spin. Going to put the pressure on. That's I uh, asked the Finstock exchange brokers how I should spin the wheel. They voted and said... With your hand. Like a discus at the Olympics. Okay. Well, I didn't... I didn't realize... So means he's going to pick up the wheel and spin around with it yeah, and just... True. Yeah, uh, Wing it. Going to be... An action stronger than words. It's going to be interesting to see. It's only what happens with your money when you invest the... Uh, yeah, just, there you go. All right. There All you right. go. It doesn't have to be a hard spin. Just... Uh, just, just something uh, to get good spin. That's a good spin. What a dainty touch by the barbarian. Spin is in. Spin is uh, in. Ken, I spy some new wheel slices on there, including Eddie Murphy. Really? Cohen Brothers. Cohen Brothers. Cohen Brothers. Cohen Brothers. Cohen Brothers. Do you want to Cohen keep Brothers. it? We're going to need an answer. He He's is going to keep, keep the Cohen Brothers. The Cohen oh, Brothers yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Each competitor that didn't round two. You betcha. <laughs> Cohen Brothers direct to Fargo. Uh, oh, yeah, you betcha. Once you're not sure of the answer, ask us <laughs> for multiple choice. It's that not offensive at all. Goes down to one. Keep in mind, stealing is available. Poutine. In round number two. It's really good. Oh, barbarian, you selected we should tell all the uh, after show podcasters about Poutine. Overloaded fries. for you right now. I will take both, please. Your first question. Both. Why not both? The world of the Coens is... Who plays Maud Lebowski in The Big Lebowski? Uh, the old guy in the wheelchair? No. I couldn't remember. Maud is uh, red hair. Oh. Uh, Four. Julianne Moore. Yes. Yes. Uh, Julianne Moore. Nice pull. Yep, thank you. All right, off night, next guys. Off night. What Coen Brothers film focuses on the character Larry Gobnick, a college professor whose life unravels during the 1960s? I think he took a bite out of the animal. Best Picture nominee, A Serious Man. He got two more what? points for that one, and he's perfect in round number two as well. All right, Barbarian slash Elvis, your next question, your penultimate one in round number two. It's not a team's match. In the film Raising Arizona, Nicolas Cage's character steals what brand Pampers. of diaper from a liquor store? Yeah. Huggies. Uh, it seemed to be some disagreement with yep. him and Elvis, but he did get Got Huggies it. correct. Ah, that would be my other guess. Pampers and Huggies. All right, one more question in the Seventh world of the Coen Brothers for a perfect round number two. In the film No Country for Old Men, Josh Brolin's character finds a satchel which holds how much money after stumbling onto a drug deal gone wrong? I can't remember how much money was in that. 
$30,000. Wow. Five. Four. Multiple choice. Is it A, $500,000, B, $1 million, C, $2 I think it's million, D, $5 million? C. $2 million is correct, oh, and that what? is another How do you put $2 answer. million dollars in a satchel? That's not physically he possible. He only had multiple choice once. He got Our $1,000 bill is actually real? In some yeah. form or no. Another, and that is a daunting then task for that's a lot of hundreds. To yeah. To the wheel Each one of those a weighs a gram. So Someone do the math. Uh, you can't come fit that in a satchel and carry it. Nice sportsmanship there by the barbarian. The wheel does yeah. stay on. Please, uh, yeah, that's a lot. That's too much for a second. Unless they like have some fictional gold coin that is worth a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, but then you're talking about a gold coin which probably weighs more yeah, than the a gram that a that's a gold coin that's worth a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, listen to me. Yeah, you just get a free respin. That'd be twenty gold coins. Crossing. All right, and round and round it goes. It really wants you to have Cohen like Brothers. Drew, Drew Barrymore. Barrymore. Uh, you do have a mulligan if you'd like you're to You're going to do a Drew Barrymore impression. you got to do it out of the side of your mouth, but I can't. You just got to make sure you're talking out of the side of your mouth. She's going to go again. It's almost like the, the female Sylvester Stallone. Suffering <laughs> Stuckatash. Uh, she doesn't say that. It is Oscars. Oscar the flow. Oscars. All right, I believe all that is, right. from what Oscar we heard before, something that the barbarian can steal. Pretty well. More questions about his ceremony. So so it'll be interesting. Right. And, uh, this this will be very interesting. Is. You go for what you think you might know or take a risk for the second spin. We'll see if it pays off for Clay. The pip. Four questions in the category of Oscars, Clay. You do have multiple choice. And two JTs remaining. First question. Nicolas Cage has won his only Oscar... For which film? Matchstick Men. Leaving Las Vegas. That's a two-point answer Dang it. there for Cleve. Although Matchstick Men was really good. Yeah, well. I was really Leaving hoping that it was Matchstick Men just because of that. Yeah. Second question. Michael Keaton received his only Oscar nomination for what The Founder. Film? Birdman? Two more points. Yeah. Also would have Please been my other fire. choice. We're going so fast, I forgot to remind folks that I'll be leaving Las Vegas March 8th because I'm performing there March 6th. Hey, that's good. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> All right. Third question out of four. Nice time here. for a plug. Who won an Academy Award for playing Edwin, Edwin. Hoover in Little Miss? Was that the Sunshine? grandfather? I think that was Alan Arkin or Steve. Alan Burrow. Arkin. Two yeah. more yeah. points for Clay. That was such stuff. a good movie. All right. I love Little All Miss right. Sunshine. We're gonna say your fourth and final question will be this: What was the first musical to win? Singing in the Rain. Best picture Ooh. multiple choice a an american uh, in paris b the broadway melody west side c, story it, G -G mm -hmm. d west side story west side story incorrect uh, uh, american in paris that's a steal for the barbarian oh. wow he and didn't even need the right? options again. That's he a huge need. steal. Clee having a great round until that last stumble, <laughs> but yep. if she remains competitive with the Barbarian. It's only four points separating them going into round number three. The Barbarian, I'm not sure you can throw a question at him that he doesn't know, and Clee hanging right there almost stride for stride. I'll tell you what, she's shown a, a lot of skill here in her first match, but so does the Barbarian if we go into the decisive third round. Maybe uh, Clee should have brought her pet badger to whisper answers into her ear. I don't steal a... fur from my grandmother. It is a chinchilla, <laughs> and this was a gift. <laughs> we don't have a ruling on whether it's actually from one of his other family members. So we will move on to round number three. In round number three, each competitor is going so to So getting pretty close here. Numbers. Numbers can range from Four point 20. difference. Each number you get uh, Barbarian is having a fantastic game. Yeah, he's down, almost no perfect down. if he didn't go uh, multiple choice on that No Country Rolled Man. Yeah, so unfortunately he left that one point on the no table. But, but, I mean, he's kind of living up to what we we heard from Ethan Irwin. So Eddie and Barbarian have the lead. They're going to give us their Elvis. three numbers first. <laughs> what do I call him, Eddie? All right. Well, he's probably not real anyway. Um, <laughs> your three numbers are. I'm sorry, Eddie's Elvis is very real. I'll go with 17 for my current score. Nice. I will go with 1982 for the year Conan the Barbarian came out. Okay, that's that... 19. No, no, 1982. <laughs> we, we, the numbers have to range from 1 to 20. They can't be dates that you're a fan of. 1919. 2. That'll work, and one more number. 2011. 
Or just 11, I guess. We can just do for 11. The year, the year, for the year that crap fest that uh, remake two. came out. 17, right. 2, and 11. 17, Would have been funny for his last one. He just went 19. Uh, 3, 18, and 6. 3, 18, and 6 it is. All right, Clee, I'll be asking you your questions. Ken will be administering to the barbarian and his pet. Um, Clee, you selected number 3. For your round, I mean, I guess it is a team's three, match. Two point question, and what do you know? Elvis. That corresponds to Oscar movies. Hey, look at that! And oh, buddy, your question for two points: What Best Picture winning film was directed by Shape Pan, of Water? Pan's Del Toro? Oh no, yeah, not Pan's Labyrinth. It's just Shape of Water, yeah. Uh, Five, four. JTE, uh, more okay. time. What, repeat um, the question. How does it go? Yeah, go again. Use the JTE rule. I'll repeat the question <laughs> Say it over. in 15 seconds. What best picture winning film what was, that? was directed <laughs> by Guillermo? Uno mas por favor. <laughs> Pan's Labyrinth. Looking for the shape of water. The shape of I don't water. Think so. But thank you. Uh, very nice of you to offer your dead road into Klee. But as we move on to uh, Klee's next question, we're going to stick with Klee here for three points. And this could pull her to within one of the Barbarians' score. Klee, you selected number 18. Mm -hmm. And that corresponds to biopics. Okay. Biopics. And your question is, name two, just two. Of the actors portraying the members of NWA in the film um, Straight Out of Ice Cube Jr. O'Shea Jackson Jr. Not that one too. Corey and and oh. Jason. Is it Corey? Five, Jason. Corey. Four. Three. Kim. A bad black person. I didn't see that movie. And that's Kim what we did. Sorry, you did get O'Shea Jackson Jr. We also needed Corey Hawkins, Jason Mitchell, Aldis Dodge, or Neil Brown Jr. To right. round I knew there was another junior in there. Comes um, down to this here. Comes down to this here, Mark. More junior in there. TKO. So I forgot there were two other members of NWA. TKO spot because Clee, I forgot, uh, there, forgot there were two other members of NWA in real life. Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and Easy E. Who are the other ones? Right. So we go to number six. Clee, you selected number six for your five point question. Yes, I did. Let's give you the lead if you get it right. Okay. And it's in the category of new releases. Okay. And your question. Five points. Which actress plays Alita? Uh, in the Salazar. 2019 film Alita Battle Angel. Now I got the last name. I can't remember the first name. Yeah, you threw me off. Rosa. Rosa Salazar, yeah. <laughs> Five. Four. Is there multiple choice in this one? There's no multiple Two. choice. You have one JDE rule remaining. That's it. And it's your it. winner by way of technical knockout, the Barbarian. Rosa Salazar. Rosa Salazar. Rosa Salazar well, was the answer we were looking for. Yeah, there. you might. Yeah, you, you, you know, good show on for Cleats in that last round, but I think. Uh, so all the you wheel know, slices are sticking to people now all of a sudden. Game, it's tough. And the crowd here is just kind of stunned as to what they just witnessed. They, yep. they, they uh, it, it, it appeared to be some sort of go for answering most of the questions correct. Yep. The Barbarian comes out on top. Uh, Clee Wiggins, a, a nice rookie showing for her, but the Barbarian clearly a force to be reckoned with going forward here in the movie. Yep. Trivia Spot. Ken, he didn't miss a question. He did not miss a question. He didn't get his last three. Didn't need them, but he did not miss a question. Did take some uh, multiple choice around two, but that's always a smart play sometimes. So perfect so far. That's pretty pretty good way to start. And he knows how to play the game. He got a nice steal there. And like you yep. said, for Clee Wiggins, uh, great round number one, great round number two, and then just got the wrong questions at yep. the wrong time for round number three, resulting in a TKO for the Barbarian. Yep. Um, your thoughts on the Barbarian moving forward? I think he I might Every be time I say TKO, I hear Justin Timberlake in my head. might be feared, uh, maybe because of rabies. Uh, maybe I was because say of outside knowledge. of the desk. Yeah, uh, but I'll tell you what. Uh, helpful hint. It's because he has a song Tom called TKO. Corner, whatever it may be that day, that hour. Uh, I think you'd be a real formidable uh, contender here in movie trivia. I stopped listening to music and in 1975. An interview with I... both the winner and the loser of today's match with the great Jen Sturger. Jen, it's all yours. Thanks so much, guys. I'm backstage with Finstock and, of course, the Barbarian. Finstock, you've got to be feeling Your head's hurting. Stop it. 
this new recruit. I know Christian was really, really hot on this guy going into the draft. I'm trying to remember how old Mom was because that was before that was she like, had this you. This might be my new guy. First of all, I see everything. Uh, second of all, you know, it goes to show that uh, great nicknames don't win uh, ball games. Uh, Clea the Pimp played really well. Um, but this guy over here is the best, okay? He's the best rookie to come out of the stable. When he fell into my lap in the seventh round, I, I was like, what dummies other managers are. I know what you're probably thinking. Where did I get this Atlanta hat? That's not at all what I said. I wasn't thinking that at all. But... I got it from the Paul Walker, uh, no, Paul Wallace Hauser. That was an unfortunate slip up. Yeah, bad one. <laughs> anyway, that being said, uh, <laughs> so we saw what he did here today. We knew what this guy was. And to answer your question, yes, everybody was high on him. I couldn't believe he fell that that far. When that dope Robert Meyer Burnett drafted the war, war father, I mistake, mistakenly thought it was him, which would have been a real issue. And uh, I would have traded for him and got him before, uh, you know, he obviously, obviously played a game. But um, look, this is just another guy in the Finstock exchange. I think mean, we've got the, the top four guys in the league as it is. This guy might be, this guy be, might be number five. We'll see. To be able to come out of the block, though, and to have your first game with zero misses, I mean, that's got to give you some confidence moving forward. You know, all the confidence I need in this world, I get from two people. Elvis and this man right here, Tom Begnino. I don't know which part of that equation is stranger at this point. <laughs> when I first showed up at the Schmodown to introduce myself, I met several managers. Most of them blew me off. Didn't take a second to talk to me. But this man right here, Tom Dagnino, he saw, he saw what I had. He told me, I'm gonna draft you. And he did. And now, the Finstock Exchange, the rich got richer, greed is great. So do you bathe that or, you know? How dare you ask that? I was just curious. I couldn't tell if it was it or Finstock. Anyways, congratulations, guys, on your first victory in the league. I'm definitely not the last, and I cannot wait to see this new crop of competitors that we have coming up in this league, because I think there's going to be a lot of surprises for all of us. Anyways, back to the desk. All right, Jen, thanks for asking that question about bathing Elvis. I have the same query myself. Ken, maybe we'll figure it out in a future match down the road, but it looks like the Finstock Exchange is just getting started for this young season. Great start to 2020. Tom does his due diligence and research, or he just has uh, people giving him information for money. I don't know. Uh, either way, it works. Uh, <laughs> more and, ladder, yeah. yeah, more ladder. But uh, you know, Barbarian, again. Or at least some uh, nice shiny fake Yeezys. About that. He might have a collection of dead ferrets in his camera. But uh, Those are who shoes. Doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't? Indeed. What? We have another new potential star that? that was on the losing end of the ledger here today, <laughs> representing corruption alongside the Queen of Corruption, Just Google it. Marnie, Clee Wiggins. Joined now by our own Jen Sturger. Jen, what's the mood over there? You know what? The mood when Shannon Barney is around is always still <coughs> elevated. It all is still I'm okay, very I promise. encouraging despite having lost because, Clee, that was a pretty great performance considering that was your first time out of the gate. And I was just wondering, did the lights get to you? Was it just kind of learning the whole ropes of the game? No, that's not any of it. Was um, it the bubbly in your hand? <laughs> no, I drink all day, all the time. Um, it was literally like the stuff I didn't know, I just didn't know. Like, I feel like the Barbarian didn't win, I lost. Because the stuff I didn't know, I just didn't know. I hmm. knew, like, the water, like, the Guillermo del Toro question, I knew it was some water. I, something about water. A fish to a dude. But, <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean to say that. A fish we'll believe it in both. has relations with a human lady. It was consensual. Yes, consensual relations. But I couldn't remember, and I couldn't just say, like, something about water. So I said the other movie that I thought he might have won for, which was Pan's Labyrinth. You know, you win some, you lose some. But it is not the lights. I'm I'm a G. I love it. I'm a G. I'm a G. Now I saw you spun away from Drew Barrymore. Do you regret that at all? No, I think I would have done the same. I, I, I think so. I'm pretty sure. Did today show you any kind of like game gamesmanship things that you could improve on as far as like, you know, learning the, the rules of the game? I saw you kind of go, do I get multiple choice on this? Do I not? Does that kind of stuff play into that? Like, is that something that you guys are going to work on going forward, Janet? 
we're absolutely going to work on it. We have tons of stuff to work on. There's always room for improvement. Um, we went over everything, but yeah, it's your first game. First <laughs> or I'm game just going to trade you away to another way, team. Yeah, and then Jen, we don't have to work on it. Jen really just pegged Shannon into a corner on that one job. there. <laughs> showed up to do the job. Yeah, we're going to work on it. <laughs> hmm. Wow. That's super impressive Some, when you know that kind of stuff. Someday later when I under the bus put her on my team again. <laughs> later. Anyways. Clee, this is nothing to hang your head about. Today was an absolutely great performance, and I am really excited for you, Shannon, because despite I having mean, kind of a disadvantage in the draft, you seem to have found some real diamond in the roughs. That's my specialty. How do you think I got this crown? <laughs> it's not an accident, people. You heard it here first, guys. Back to the desk. Uh, Ken, can we fact check? Is that crown actually made out of diamonds? Uh, it, it absolutely is. Uh, it, it, Shannon spares no exp exp expense. Look, uh, corruption's off to a, you know, a little bit of a rocky start here in 2020. Yeah. Where I'm not over there. I don't know what's going on in those clubhouse meetings. But there's been, been a precedent well, set, be, though. If you uh, lose your first match in corruption, you're uh, kind of bounced if you're a newbie. Great, and I think she'll find her Which, Bonnie really isn't even a newbie. Uh, she just doesn't have a winning record. So the question is, does Shannon do the same with somebody who isn't a rookie? That's going to help. Yeah, you know, as an as she does with a rookie, here, I would look at corruption. I would say, uh -huh. yeah, you had a, a few she can do the same to clear that she did it, Bonnie. So far, but don't stop what you're doing. Don't don't stop drinking the champagne. I Continue know. on this road because I think eventually corruption will find them. We haven't heard anything about like any possible trades that are happening as of right now. That's true. They're going to be just uh, fine. This is the big weekend for Atlanta, so probably won't either. Yeah, but a new party to this movie trivia show. Who knows? New era. That's right. I, you know, Tom's. Bobby Gucci, whatever, Covering interesting character. I, I, he knows what he's doing, and he's off to a great start. And we uh, thank everybody for watching not only this episode, but being such great supporters of the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Whether you tell your aunt, your uncle, your dead ferret about the Movie Trivia Schmodown, or you join our Patreon. Check it out today and select which tier is right for you. That is Ken, why we love Star Wars Knapsack. He's an author. In addition to being America's foremost foot model, I am merely Mark Baby Carrots Ellis, and we'll see you real soon at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Yeah, so Yeah, so like like I was saying, uh there's been a precedent set in corruption right now where uh especially with how packed the season is full of people who need to get matches. Mm -hmm. You have the situation where if you don't win your first match, there's a chance that you're probably not going to get another match for a while, especially if you're a rookie. Now, because they need to make room for winners. I don't know if that's even something specifically with corruption. Uh, we could see other well, other factions start doing that as well. It's not even so. No, it's it's that's not a that's not that's a whole league wide thing. There's just so many people who need to get matches in the league that, you know, there's there's only room for those who like. Okay, you won. Cool, you get another match. You didn't win. It's gonna be a minute before you get another match. Christian well, has said so. We might as well just take you off the faction because you're probably not gonna see and, another and match. That's kind of that's kind of to a degree what. What Shannon did with Bonnie was, mm -hmm. look, your your record right now is like, what, 0-3 it is now? You know, no slight against you, but, you know, the season is packed. It's it's a dog-eat-dog -dog season trying to get these matches. We don't really have time or room for somebody who's got that kind of a losing record, and unfortunately. I know, I know, like, originally when the the nuke first came out and it was mentioned that it was going to be a draft this season, everyone's comparing it to, say, like, the NFL draft. Yeah. Well, the difference here is if you're playing for the NFL, you're on a team. There's, like, about a 100 of you guys on the field all at one time. So if you're drafted, you're very likely to be playing multiple games. While here, it's a very single match that mm. if you're drafted, you're going to play a match just by yourself. You're not playing week after week after week like yeah. the thousand people on your team in the NFL are doing. So it, it, it's not viable. There's just not enough time for all, all right for everyone to get in the spotlight for that. And, and that's just that's just what you're up against in the Schmodown right now. That's just how they have to operate this season because you're looking at a situation where should Christian be able to acquire a new studio, his own studio, to be able to run these matches out of as as the chairman running all the matches out of his own studio, mm -hmm. he doesn't have to rent from Glider anymore. In which case, it's not just two Saturdays a month that are open for filming. It's now every Saturday or maybe some other days of the week, depending on how you have to schedule people, is open. So now there's so many more matches that can be taped, 
So many more matches that can be aired on YouTube. So many more matches to react so to. So many more matches to react to. <laughs> I mean, that's the situation. You know, you're looking at uh, get a new studio, get a whole lot more matches. In which case, you, yeah, the situation is maybe uh, Klee or someone like Klee or Bonnie, who loses their first match of the season, actually can get another match to kind of come back a lot sooner than you'd think. But... We'll we'll see. I mean, yeah, they are going to Atlanta this weekend, so there's not really there's not really like any space to talk about a trade, and you don't even have to trade anymore. If anything, Shannon can honestly be like, you know what, open spot on my team. I'm dropping I'm dropping this person. Oh yeah, open just leaving an open spot on my team. We'll see what happens after the free for all. If there's some people who uh, I might want to pick up after that, possibly. So, that's what you're up against. Now on the other end, Barbarian, dude performed. Yeah. Did exactly as he was touted to do. Again, pretty much went perfect, with the exception of having to go to multiple choice in the second round. Yeah. But, I mean, still, he got all the points he was able to get, despite that. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a very strong performance for him right out the gate. Uh, he looked pretty, like, calm and cool about it the whole time, so it didn't look like the lights were really getting to him. Yeah. Or... He just hit it very well, and he was just nervously stroking Elvis or whatever that thing is the whole time. A little and nervous tick. Yeah. Um, yeah possibly. Um, I think he's going to be a strong competitor going forward. I think we're going to see some big things out of uh, the Barbarian. Mm-hmm. We'll see uh, We'll see what he provides. And we'll see when when and if Klee can get another match in there, because I think that, I mean, she, she showed in that first round, she definitely showed that she's got some knowledge. It's just there's a few questions there. It's just... She did like me during this video where I was like, what was uh, my head? I can't think of what was. Ah, uh, darn it. So I think she's also somebody who could actually come back and, and have a pretty good showing as well. But yeah. we'll see. We'll see when that happens. So the first thing that it's not going to happen is going to be tomorrow, Saturday oh. in Atlanta because they already have a stacked card and it's also already sold out. So that means a bunch of people logged on to theschmodownlive.com, found tickets to Atlanta, and bought those tickets and sold it the freak out. Um, I, freak out! <laughs> live freak, say chic. Yeah. Freak anyway, out. so you can go pick up tickets over there at theschmodownlive.com. They have the tickets for the free-for-all up right now. There's also... What else is coming? Well, let's see. Free-for-all is in March. Is in March. Uh, probably There's, be on the lookout. They, I don't know if they have nailed down the confirmation of Houston yet for April, but as soon as that confirmation happens, be on the lookout for those tickets. Like Houston, like right outside our, the front door over here. Yeah, give or take three hours. We could go back to Houston. That is a truth fact. Just like we did at the beginning of the season when we reacted with Brad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be the third time we go to the Booker T World Gym, World Gym, World We're, Gym Arena. Yeah, tongue twisters, huh? So go pick up tickets for that when it goes up live on the Schmodownlive.com. We're professionals. There's also the Schmodown Throwdown that's happening in March. That's going to be the family versus corruption. Yep. Uh, who knows where that one might go because that's going to be a number one contender match for that number one contender spot. Current belt holders for the uh, for the team's belts are the Founding Fathers. So that would be another match between the Founding Fathers and Corruption should Corruption win. And that would be a nice solid match between the family and the Founding Fathers. Because that would be the first time since beating him that Andrew Guy faces Dan Merle. Either way, there's going to be a match played in Houston, huh? At a wrestling arena, hey, right? You know what? We don't know for sure what that is yet. We can probably take a mm. guess based on <laughs> scheduling, but you never know. It might not be a title match. It probably will. What but I'm it trying might to say one. is get the tickets to the Schmodown Throwdown live stream and keep and your eyes on the mm, tickets for Houston. Exactly. Uh, also, go over to the Schmodown Entertainment Network YouTube channel. Make sure you like and subscribe over there. Comment on this video. Help them drive up attention on these videos because liking and commenting drives the YouTube algorithm to make people watch videos just like it does to us. I'll talk about that more in a minute. Real quick before we move on, let's go back to that Atlanta thing real quick because you can actually still pick up your live stream for that. Oh, yeah. uh, depends on when you're getting this video out, honestly. Uh, as quick as possible. Yeah, if this video is out before the Atlanta match, you can pick up your live stream for that. 
Or you can hop on the Schmodown Patreon at the $10 level. Gives you the live stream and the yes. ability to watch it over. A, I don't think Atlanta's going to be out for like a week and a half or so. Something so like go hop on the Patreon. Jump at least on that $10 level. There's so many benefits on that $10 level this season. Hop on that. You get that Atlanta. You'll get the Schmodown throwdown. You'll get the free-for-all all when they come out that nice shiny weekend when it arrives and you guys for sure want to see this atlanta match as quickly as possible because like all other live events this season the spoilers, spoilers. are going to be f- open wide open season yep you're not going to be able to hop on social media without seeing who wins these matches so you got to <laughs> jump over there and get it seen real quick which means we got to film that tomorrow <laughs> uh not gonna happen yeah maybe i don't know We'll see. Anyways, again, hop on Patreon. Help them out on the Schmodown Entertainment Network YouTube channel and buy tickets to live stream and the live events. As for us, the Cinefanatics, this next upcoming Tuesday, March 3rd, we will be launching our first weekly live stream show. It will be the tagline. The tagline. This is going to be a show where we talk about movies. We're talking about movie news. We're talking about things in the movie space. We will talk about Schmodown stuff. And literally Every- everything else dealing with movies. Pretty and much. nothing not dealing with movies. Because that's, that's one of the taglines. I guess. I don't so know. make sure you join us every Tuesday. It's going to be at 9.30 p.m. Central Time for the tagline. That is the show where the tagline is the title. Nailed it. Awesome. Make sure you follow us on social media. We are at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. Come follow us on our Facebook group. We are at Facebook.com slash groups slash Cinefanatics. What are you doing? <sighs> oh, yeah, the invisible bars again. <laughs> and Yes. Also, for this channel, this is our YouTube channel that you are watching us on. Make sure you like and comment on this video. Again, it helps us out. Like and comment. Subscribe to us. You can subscribe to us by hitting the button down there or the button that's up there above Laughing Boy's head. YouTube channel. Over here off to the side are a couple other videos that we have made. And as always, uh, I got nothing. I want to pet my Roo now. Well, do that later in your own bedroom. Later. See ya. So, real quick, I was right on that sports reference, right? 1,000 people on team? Yeah, that's what I thought.